The year was 2016, and to showcase the capabilities of a newly launched PSVR headset came the creation of Astrobot. Though he wasn't given a proper name until his own PSVR adventure two years later, with Astrobot Rescue Mission on PS4, another two years passed and Astro became the star of another game, Astro's Playroom. Serving as sort of a tech demo for the PS5 and the DualSense's capabilities, this game came pre-installed on every single PS5 console, which technically makes it the highest selling PlayStation game in history because the PS5 itself sold more than 59 million consoles and kinda making Astro almost as much of a Sony master as Ratchet and Clank. It also helps everyone love the game, so naturally, as soon as the trailer dropped for the next Astrobot, four years later, which is where we're at now, the hype became real. To the point the trailer outright kicked Concord's gameplay trailer to the curb, at least when talking about the like to dislike department, with the dislike numbers only being visible via a browser extension. But because of that, this made actual headlines in the gaming space, as it essentially made everyone question the current state of the gaming landscape. It's the exact game PlayStation needs right now. I'll take more games like Astrobot, please. PlayStation finally has the Mario rival it needs. Astrobot is exactly what PlayStation was missing. Why we hate Concord and love Astrobot? I've gotten bored of realism and graphics. That's right, this guy, this little robot platformer that Sony clearly underestimated, is now a wake up call for an industry that constantly strives for that online FPS, graphically cinematic, live action movie and or open world approach. Don't believe me? Look at how fast Jeff Keighley acts unimpressed with the Sonic franchise, then immediately hypes up the next Dune video game. The Year of Shadow, right? A movie coming in December too. Exciting stuff. All right. In the upcoming online survival game Dune Awakening from Funcom, they real smooth, Jeff. Everyone caught that. But recently, I had the chance to play Astro's Playroom for the first time, and I can see why people are so hyped for this next release. Because this game, alongside Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, A Hat in Time, and Sonic Frontiers, are games that I've played in recent memory that brought me pure joy from start to finish, and Shadow Generations looks to be the same story. But stuff like Uncharted and Horizon are for sure impressive, and I do enjoy them, but in my opinion, they just don't have that same spark. And because both games have a realistic art style, they start to blend with every other game with a realistic art style and getting pretty stale. This was actually touched upon in a recent Kinda Funny Games livestream with Tim Geddes and Greg Miller and I completely agree with what they had to say. It's, uh, I, I just, I love it because I, I feel like 3D platformers, uh, platformers in general, are video games. It is the core to what video games are when you think of video sure. games in their purest form. Well, I mean, uh, Mario started it all for so many people. Exactly, right? exactly. And I, I just feel like we've gotten so far away from that at video games. When you think video games, you don't necessarily, you don't think platforms. I do because I'm old school like that, but I think most people think first person shooters or things like Last of Us, like bigger experiences that are like more movie like and cinematic. Uh, so I really appreciate just the, the, the passion and care being put into the fun of just gameplay um, and just the, the magic of the, the wonder of anything can happen. Any gimmick uh, can be introduced to the level and they're going to expel every ounce of fun of that gimmick. And Astrobot entirely runs with that. Anyway, with that tangent out of the way, and since Astrobot is a mere months from launch, let's go over everything we know about Astrobot so far. Pre-orders are currently open for all free editions, physical, standard digital, and digital deluxe. I still, for the life of me, cannot pronounce that correctly. The physical edition costs $59.99 US. It includes the game, two profile icons, early unlocks for a Parappa outfit, more on those later, the glorious graffiti color for the dual speeder ship, which features a ton of PlayStation characters on it, and I so wish this was an actual dual sense, I'd buy that in a heartbeat. And you get a double sided physical poster. One side serves as kind of a prologue comic before the events of the game, and the other is just a cute poster showing all the little bots doing their thing inside the PS5 ship, which 
Astro himself is the captain. This one's packed full of easter eggs to other PlayStation and even third-party IP that are heavily associated with PlayStation. Loco Roco, Ape Escape, Metal Gear, a cart full of miscellaneous items that include a Patapon from, well, Patapon, a Precursor Orb from Jack and Daxter, a Wumpa Fruit from Crash Bandicoot, and a Red Gem from Spyro the Dragon, just to name a few. And this makes the physical edition a must-have for me. The standard digital edition is the same story, minus the poster, so for the same price, you might as well go physical for this one. The digital- oh screw this, I'm just gonna call it the deluxe edition, it's the same thing and includes the game, 10 additional profile icons with a few based on Ratchet, Uncharted, Horizon, Bloodborne, and Journey. The official soundtrack and digital art book early unlocks for two additional dual speeder colors, Champion's Gold and Neon Dream, and also early unlocks for two additional outfits, Yarnum Hunter from Bloodborne and Golden Astro. If you decide to go with the standard edition, the outfits and dual speeder colors from the deluxe edition will be unlockable as you progress through the story and unlock the respective buildings in the crash site. Which I assume would be the hub world, possibly similar to the labo in Astro's Playroom. And for those wondering, yes, the outfits are part of the game's new customization system, which so far only appears to be for the dual speeder and Astro's outfits. We have some footage for the Parappa, Bloodborne, and Golden Astro outfits, so I'd have to assume we'll unlock more throughout the game. Mark my words, because this is very likely to happen, but if there's outfits for Sly Cooper, Ratchet and Clank, Rivet, Jack and Daxter, Nathan Drake, Sir Dan, Sackboy, Cat, who's confirmed to be in the game by the way, I'm sure as heck going to be using nothing but those outfits, cause this is probably the closest we'll get to playing as these characters again, even if it's just a skin for Astrobot with no special abilities whatsoever. While on the topic of customization, the PlayStation Store page mentions that coins and a gacha machine will be present in the game. Now considering the info I just went over, this won't be how we get outfits or dual speeder colors, because both the coins and the machine are from Astro's Playroom. In that game, they're used to unlock mural pieces and artifacts from PlayStation's history in the PS Labo. So I'd imagine they'll have the same functionality here as well, but for the crash site. Possibly with a few additions too. Something that a good amount of people have been wondering about is, will this game support VR? No. <laughs> I don't really know why people are surprised, considering Playroom didn't have it whatsoever. In my opinion, that's a major plus, cause 1. I don't use a VR headset, and 2. I don't like the idea of locking a game behind a VR headset, as it cuts off a good chunk of a player base. Especially if the headset costs way more than the PS5 itself. According to the PlayStation blog, Astrobot will have 80 levels spread across 6 galaxies. As Astro searches for the members of his missing crew, assuming after the PS5 ship crashed, with Astro waking up in what remains of it, making this much larger than Playroom and, ultimately, Team Asobi's biggest project to date. This is even reflected in the game's reported file size at around 70 gigabytes for the Japanese version, compared to Playroom's almost 12 gigabyte file size. Looking at the trailer, as well as the screenshots and gameplay going around, we do see a good amount of levels on display, though I can't put a definitive number on how many we've seen, cause if we look at the level structure in Astro's Playroom, it tells us that every world consists of multiple levels you can just walk right into and receive sort of an Uncharted styled confirmation. This very same thing happens in this game, looking at the Summer Games Fest footage, but it's only upon entering the level via the dual speeder, which requires the use of motion controls for steering. So, 
what levels have we seen? Well, we have a desert level, which appears to be the crash site where all the bots hang out after rescuing them. There's a beach tropical themed level, a snowy mountain level, a futuristic skyway level, a mountainous island level, another desert level that appears to be a separate one from the crash site hub world, a futuristic construction site in the sky, which was playable at Summer Games Fest, and features a brand new magnetic mechanic, a level focusing on ruins in a dark cave, Casino Night Zone, you guys know I had to do that. What happens in Casino Night Zone stays in Casino Night Zone! And either Chinese or Japanese inspired level, probably the latter given Team Asobi, the team working on this game for the past three years with only a 60 member dev team, is a Japanese studio. Really like the look of this one. An underwater level showcasing Astro's new ability to swim underwater, something he couldn't do in Playroom. Another ruins focused level but this time above ground. A space fiend level, an ice cave level, a lava level, a level with a great Deku tree. Just kidding, it's a singing tree we get to explore the canopy of. Though with Sony doing a live action Zelda movie, they oughta put the Master Sword in here somewhere. Nah. It'll probably be Cloud Sword from Final Fantasy and call it a day, but it wouldn't be the same. Another look at the space level could be the same area as the first. We've got a snowy ocean level. Another tropical area with Big Brother, a returning character from previous Astro games, a Norse area with Kratos, which is probably the same one IGN and everyone was talking about that was teased in the demo they played at Summer Games Fest and has led everyone to believe there will be levels based around individual PlayStation IP, and that would be so cool if it happens. I can already imagine Paris, France for Sly Cooper, Sandover Village for Jack and Daxter, seeing as their bot is already based on Jack 1's designs. Same for Ratchet, so possibly Metropolis for him and Clank, Hexaville for Gravity Rush, and Gallomere for Medieval. I mean, we're not far off from the Medieval one, since we do have a Victorian era styled level, though it references Bloodborne's Clock Tower, uh... I do feel sorry for all you Bloodborne fans for getting all this acknowledgement but no sequel. You now officially share the pain us Sly Cooper fans feel. The PS blog also mentions a level based around a giant hourglass. I'm so tempted to crack a joke about a hat in time, but I won't. There's also a screenshot with a bunch of Astro Cats and an Astro Mouse? Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm missing for reference, but... Okay. Anyway, if we don't count boss levels, and assuming these aren't parts of the same areas, we have about 22 levels that were shown off to some extent. There will also be challenging die and retry levels for those wanting a bit of extra challenge. Essentially, the network speedrun levels from Playroom. And apparently, the post-launch free DLC levels will also be focusing on this component specifically, but it's currently unknown what else they'll entail. Navigating through these levels requires the use of over 15 brand new abilities that take full advantage of the DualSense. And let me just pause for a second to appreciate just what the DualSense is capable of. After getting my hands on it after so long, this controller is absolutely incredible. It feels great, feeling every one of Astro's footsteps across the many different surfaces, the tension in the triggers, even in Rift Apart, it's pretty dang impressive. This is hands down the best controller I've ever owned, and I can't see myself going back to anything else. I'm not going back! Now Team Asobi is taking it even further than in Playroom, to the point they had to create a smaller team called DualSense 2.0 to extract even more from this thing. Speaking with IGN during Summer Games Fest, head of Team Asobi, Nicholas Dose, I really hope I pronounced that correctly, talked about some of the things that weren't quite possible with it at the start, and now we're at a point where you can have Astro walk up against a wall and he'll touch it like in Uncharted. And by doing so, you can feel the changes in texture to find a secret passage. And that is such a cool idea. There's thankfully going to be less touchpad stuff this time around. And thank goodness, those bits got tedious pretty quickly. Especially when taking the Crash Bandicoot death routes. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. 
Out of the over 15 abilities we've seen 7 so far, Barkster grants the ability of Bulldog Booster, allowing for dash attacking enemies and breaking obstacles. The Twin Frog Gloves gives Astro the ability to punch enemies from really far away, grab and slam them. It can also be used to swing over chasms. Giant Sponge allows you to suck up water and cause destruction. This right here is when I started getting massive Kirby and the Forgotten Land vibes. I love that game, so this looks promising. If you want to know more about this ability and how it came to be, I'll leave a link to the IGN interview down in the description below. We've seen two other abilities, but so far, they're not named yet. But in Casino Night Zone, Astro gets a backpack and possibly a PSVR headset that grants him the ability to slow down time. And the Summer Games Fest demo showcased an inflator ability, which gives Astro more height to explore. The PlayStation blog mentions a sixth ability centered around rockets, which we haven't seen footage of yet. And ability number seven is the Monkey Climber, giving Astro the ability to grab heavy objects and throw them at breakable objects, activate special switches, coupled with a return of a monkey climbing gimmick from Playroom. These abilities serve as an upgrade to Astro's current abilities, and the team wanted to do more of that to complement the platforming first and foremost, instead of the aforementioned touchpad stuff. Well, they still are, but in different ways that I already talked about. But ultimately, the main goal of traversing these planets and using these abilities are to rescue Astro's fellow crewmates. There's 300 in the game, 7 per level, two of them being themed after PlayStation IPs, also known as VIP bots. Rescuing them, like Ratchet who's tied to a tree, heh. <laughs> Glad to see that no matter what universe Ratchet's in, he's always getting captured pretty easily. Twice. These are clearly two different builds, in case it wasn't clear. Over 150 of these guys are based on PlayStation IPs, complete with redesigns that make them more faithful to their home games. At least when compared to Playroom, so far we've seen Sly Cooper with his full outfit from Sly 1. There's also U2's in the works, Sly 5 confirmed, I'm just kidding. Now Jack and Daxter received the most noticeable changes. Daxter actually looks like himself instead of a rabbit, with Jack sporting his full Precursor Legacy outfit. Ratchet's based on his original PS2 look, with an actual Omni Wrench and not the $10 hardware store version, Clank shiny and shaped accordingly, and even Rivet joins for fun this time. Nathan Drake, full outfit and the toy gun Nate uses in near the start of Uncharted 4. Cat has the scarf and outfit instead of just the hairpiece. This one came from a Summer Games Fest press event, which kind of explains the not entirely clear quality, but no sign of Dusty yet. Come on, you gotta include the cat. Parappa actually got the invitation this time. There's some for Journey, Shadow of a Colossus, The Last Guardian, Aloy from Horizon, and in the intro to the trailer, we see a Pippo monkey and Spike from Ape Escape. The monkey and a few other PlayStation characters actually made it into Playroom recently via free updates, which kinda double as easter egg hunts, and upon finding them, you can bring them over into Astrobot. It's sort of a cross-save bonus. According to multiple sources, The Last of Us will be present as well as third-party characters. Playroom featured series such as Resident Evil, Tomb Raider, Crash, and even Spyro. Series that Sony doesn't own whatsoever. Like I already mentioned, the poster does feature references to both Crash and Spyro. So it's possible they could be back as well, despite being owned by Xbox now. Rescuing them sends the bots to the DualSense controller, where you can interact with them via the touchpad or motion controls. And at the end of a level, you fly off with them back to the Crash site. Oh, and remember the coins in the Gacha Lab I mentioned earlier? Well, they're also used to unlock special items for these VIP bots. According to the PlayStation website, when a VIP bot is reunited with their unique item, they'll perform special actions from the classic games that inspired them. I'm not gonna pretend I really know what that means, but here's assuming this'll be idle animations, or simple actions like Jack and Daxter grabbing a power cell in Precursor Legacy.
But the big thing here is that they're a much bigger part of the story, and that Astro might be teaming up with them throughout the game. But of course, we can't have an adventure of this magnitude without enemies. There's over 70 new types of enemies with a massive boss fight at the end of each galaxy. Seeing as there's 6 galaxies in the game, there'll be 6 bosses in total. Five of which we see in the trailer. Mighty Chewie, an unnamed bird and octopus are returning bosses from Astrobot Rescue Mission. The final boss of that game, the alien, aka Astro's rival, also makes a return, possibly serving as the final boss yet again when you assume control over the repaired PS5 ship that he initially wrecks at the start of the game and taking back the stolen CPU. I can't believe that is an actual sentence I'm using to describe a video game boss fight. What a time we're in! Though most of the bosses appear to be returning from previous games, there are two brand new bosses in this game. This one looks like a genie for an Arabic themed area. No official name has been given for this one yet. The other one is the deadly Cobra Queen, Lady Venomera. Probably my favorite boss of a bunch. Especially with the whole Egyptian theme going on, I'm a big sucker for this stuff. Also worth mentioning, during this boss, we can see Astro's health meter from the final boss of Playroom. Suggesting the game will still have that one hit and back to the checkpoint system from Playroom, I do want to mention the soundtrack real quick, cause the music in this series has been playing rent free in my mind since Astrobots trailer dropped. We have Kenny Young, the composer of Astro's Playroom, to thank for that, because now he's returning to do the music for this Astrobot game. And oh boy, I cannot wait to see what everyone's cooking for this game. One final thing I do want to mention about Astrobot before we go is that it took so long making this video that I didn't get to mention this earlier, but Team Asobi did consider making this game an open world title, but decided to go for a level-based approach because that was the one that gave us the most control over the games of variety. And before we completely wrap up the video, I brought up Concord at the start of the video, and the game since had its open beta on Steam and PlayStation, and it's launching very soon, so let's check in on it. Oh, that's not a good sign. But with that said, I think that's just about everything we know about Astrobot so far. I seriously can't wait to play this game. September 6th can't come soon enough. But what do you guys think about Astrobot, and is there something I might have missed? Be sure to leave everything down in the comments section below. Also be sure to subscribe and ring that bell for more PlayStation content. Once again, I've been Blue Knight. Thank you so much for watching and for the constant support. I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you guys back here next time.